Well, the incident came at a time of a declared truce in the east of the country. President Putin, along with his German and French counterparts, has called on Ukrainian leader Petro Poroshenko to extend the ceasefire that expires at 7 p.m. GMT on Monday. They held a phone conversation overnight. RT's Maria Fenoshina reports now on how the ceasefire has affected life in embattled areas. Those we have been able to speak to here in the city of Lugansk and its region have been telling us that it did bring relative calmness and nights became more silent so that finally people now could sleep. But of course we continue here hearing about sporadic fire often resulting in fatalities including among civilian population. We heard that the city of Slodansk, the epicenter of what Kiev calls its anti-terror operation, repeatedly came under fire with residential area attack and a woman killed. A church was also hit at the time when during mass was happening there. There were also a series of explosions at an arms depot in Donetsk. No soldiers were there at the time. We've been hearing from Ukrainian military repeatedly that the checkpoints were attacked by self-defense forces. Well. Uh, we can say that, unfortunately, whatever peace there is now in this part of the country remains very, very fragile. And, of course, people are very tired. They are exhausted of this situation of months of clashes and months of tensions. Many fled already uh, the country, but many stay here. And we've been hearing from many of them that their plan is that in case of emergency, in case of need, they will use bomb shelters. And we visited some of them. And here's my report about that. This is our bomb shelter. Watch out. It was built decades ago when Ukraine was part of the USSR at the height of the Cold War. And it seems those dark times are returning to this part of the world. The enemy may be different, but these abandoned sites are now coming back to life. As they say, if you want peace, prepare for war. Vadim, a Lugansk resident, volunteered to clean up Soviet-era bunkers. They could provide a crucial defense against army air raids and artillery fire, he says. We speak to Vadim during what is supposed to be a ceasefire. They keep bombing us, which is why we're working here. The infrastructure is destroyed, so we're taking the most important first steps to fix it and allow people to shelter here. Similar work is currently underway at many similar sites all over the city. About 100 bomb shelters are already open. There is also a kitchenette with some basic food and first aid kits. Suddenly we hear with sounds like distant shooting. When we film, Vitaly's daughter, Nastya, stops by. She also heard what we did. The sky was lit up with explosions when we were walking home through a field. Then there were sirens and everyone started running away. It was terrifying. The same thing happened later that night. The ceasefire expires in just a few hours' time and no one can say for sure whether these long abandoned bomb shelters will be needed again. Marif Noshnati in Lugansk, Eastern Ukraine.